kind of a long story. I'll try and see if I can fit it in 60 seconds. So we met in our early 20s. We got married at 27. And we did not have the connection and the chemistry that we should have, if that makes sense, in like the bedroom. And I married the nice guy and he married the hot girl. And uh, we were best friends, got along so well. We did not fight, we got along so well. But after 14 years together, 12 years married, that lack of chemistry and connection became a huge hole in our marriage. And we filled it with other people. <laughs> so it was just, our marriage had run its course and we had our kids together and that's awesome. And he's happily remarried and that's great. And I'm happy for him. So my divorce post is not rare. Yeah, so did I know before I got married? Of, of course I did. I was 27 when I got married. I was 26 when I got engaged. Do you think you know everything in your 20s? And everyone had told me my entire life, passion fades, passion fades, passion fades. So I took that as you didn't need it. If it fades, why do you even need it? Better off to marry the nice guy, right? I had dated all the douchebags in my 20s and had my heart broken. So I was like, I'm going to go with the nice guy. And to be perfectly honest, he'd been a nerd in high school. He'd never gotten the pretty girls. And I think he married me because I was beautiful. I am beautiful, you know? And we were best friends. Best friends. And that carried us along for a long time until it didn't. All right, here's a little story. Fellas, pay attention. So I don't just do hair. I actually own a salon. And one of my other stylists has a client. And every time she comes in to get her hair done, which isn't all the time, but it's often enough. Her husband gets there hours before her to drop off a box of chocolates for her. This man leaves his home, goes to the chocolate store, which is two doors down, buys this woman a box of chocolates, and drops them off at the salon. So when his wife gets there, her stylist presents her with a box of chocolates, and she gets her hair done. Now, I don't need you to be exclusive with me, but I'm looking for that level of commitment. I'm looking for a man who's going to bring me chocolates to my hair appointment or coffee. Don't stay for the kids. That's like one of the number one things I'm seeing in my comments. I'm staying for the children. I'm staying for the children. Part of the reason I left was because of the children. I get it. I get it. Thinking about having your children only half the time is nauseating right it makes you sick to your stomach to think about but I didn't want to set the example for my children that lukewarm was what marriage looked like and if you don't have a healthy marriage your kids will know and then they'll think that's what marriage is and then they'll get into a marriage and think well this is like my parents would you tell your children to stay in a marriage that didn't fulfill them. Always just trying to keep it real, but, and I'm not the lady who cries on TikTok, but sometimes being a single mom is hard because you don't have anybody else to rely on except for yourself. And so my hot water heater went out and um, I now have to miss my youngest son's flag football game, which I only get to go to every other week because I work on the weeks that I, with the weekends that I don't have them. And now I have to miss it because I have to stay home for a damn hot water heater to be installed. And it's just super frustrating at times because I'm the only adult in the house. And so now I have to leave him and go do that. And it's just, sometimes it's just hard to not have anybody to rely on. And yes, while I have a boyfriend, he doesn't know my kids. They're not involved. And so he can't be at my house. He can't help. It's just me. It's just me. And sometimes it's hard. And that's real. My boyfriend of two years moved out 10 days ago and I'm just really, really feeling really sad today. I miss him so much. And I know that 
I know it's the right decision, but it's just, it's so hard. <laughs> I'm so sad. <laughs> and I wish I could be mad at him. It would make it so much easier, but I can't. There's no anger. There's only love. <laughs> And it's excruciating. And I know I have valid reasons. And I know it's the best thing in the end. But it's so hard. It's so hard. I miss him so much. If you're going through the same thing, I just want to say I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry you're going through this. And you're really strong. It takes a really strong person to do this and to not change their mind and say, you know what, forget it. Forget everything I said. Just come back. I don't want to be alone. And I'm scared to be alone. But I made a commitment to myself when I left my husband that I was never going to ignore my intuition. I was never going to ignore that little voice that said, Claire, something's not right. And I guess I love myself more than I love him. And I know that's a victory. <laughs> I know that that's a good thing that I love myself enough to not settle for less than I deserve less than I want but it's so hard it's just so hard <laughs> for the last little while I have been feeling like I don't know what I want to do with my life I thought I wanted to be a life coach, but now I'm not sure. And what I really want to do is help women leave relationships who feel stuck. People. Include men in there. I want to help anyone who is in a relationship that no longer works for them, is toxic or abusive. I want to help them find a way out. But I have no idea how to do that. And it seems massive. It seems inconquerable. It seems beyond me. And if I'm 100% honest, I don't want it to negatively impact my ex. Because he's not a bad person. He did some bad things. He did not treat me as I should have been treated. But he is not a bad person and I do not want to hurt him. And by me saying that I felt stuck in our relationship and wanted to leave for several years... It feels like that hurts him. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But I'm holding back. I'm holding back on what I really want to do in life. Because I don't want to hurt him any more than I already have. I'm sorry. I want to tell him that I'm sorry I hurt him. 
and that our relationship got more and more toxic. But it was the hardest thing I've ever done because I knew it was going to I knew it was going to break your heart. And I hope someday you see that I did this for both of us because we couldn't stay living like that. We just couldn't. Not if we wanted to be fulfilled, happy people, individuals. And I wish the best for you. I really do. And I know we hurt each other, but I hope that someday there's no tension or animosity. But I hope that I hope that you'll forgive me. I had to get out. I had to get out if I wanted to be well. And if I wanted you to be well. Some people think that, you know, when you're the one to leave a marriage that it's easy and you're just instantly happy and that's not true. It's not true. It's incredibly difficult. It's so hard. You know you're breaking that other person's heart, but you know you have to do it anyway. And it was soul crushing. But I've done a lot of tough things in my life. I've done a lot of hard things. And I am resilient. And I'm, I'm starting to love myself. And... I'm going to do what's best for me. I'm not going to people please anymore. It's, I just can't. It's too hard. I'm not going to mask. I'm not going to pretend. I'm going to be my real self. You're goddamn right. What's the one thing you wish everyone around you knew about getting divorced? Everyone always prepares you that whenever you're going through a divorce, losing your husband or wife, you go through a grieving process, grieving for the loss of your marriage, um, the loss of your hopes and dreams together. Um, but one thing that they really don't prepare you for is the loss of a friend, the loss of your best friend, the person that you always wanted to tell, you know, tell your day and to tell, you know, your small wins and your small victories. And um, I don't. I wasn't prepared for that. I wasn't prepared for feeling that way. Even when you're not together and haven't been together, um, just having that desire to have them as a friend again. Is there anyone out there in TikTok land that can tell me what you're supposed to do with your life when you've been in a relationship for 20 plus years with the same person? You have children, you have you know, built a life together, and then all of a sudden that life is no longer. What are you supposed to do with your life? Like, I, I work, I'm a, I'm a registered nurse, I, I have a, so I have a career, I guess. Um, I have hobbies, I have, like, I don't know, a house. A, I have all the things that I guess you need to live the life, but I... I don't know how. I don't like do you do you date other people? Like do you do you sort of like I just don't know. I want to focus on myself. I want to be happy. I want to I just I I want to heal from this this whole process that I've been in. But I also want to live life. Like I also want to have fun. I don't want it to be all about being miserable and feeling sad and and just going through the motions of life because my relationship my marriage broke down like I, I just don't want to do that anymore I want to be happy I want to move on and I want to just find joy in life again my husband fell in love with my best friend now ex-husband ex-best friend but they fell in love it's now been four years and I wanted to share a very important lesson that I learned 
The people that are meant to be in your life will be in your life. Nothing will stop them from simply being in your life. If it's so easy for someone to leave, then they were never truly meant to be with you long term anyways. Also, I see people begging people to stay in their life. You really want someone in your life that you have to beg for? No, thank you. And if you're really fighting for someone to stay, don't you value and respect yourself enough to just let them go? I know that divorce is really hard and I know that sitting in the loneliness is really hard, but it's way better than begging and pleading for someone to see your worth and your value. You are worth so much more than that and I hope you see that. So from one heartbreak to another, I see you and I love you. So there are some crucial things that people don't talk about after you go through a divorce. The fact that the quietness and the emptiness in your home when you don't have your spouse or your children is deafening. You have to really get comfortable with being alone and it's very uncomfortable. You quickly realize that you are now the center stage of all conversation in your friend group because you're now living this wild and fun life because you're no longer attached to anybody. And I don't know about you, but I spent a lot of my time crying and eating pizza and drinking wine in the bathtub. Being single is glamorized in today's society and people are saying, yes, good for being single and you should really, really just enjoy it. It's so freeing. When really you lost your purpose because you've been supporting this person for X amount of years and supporting their aspirations and and their goals and their dreams and their desires and you lost yourself along the way. So now you, yeah, it's beautiful. You get to find yourself and, but it's hard to sit in that and be like, oh, who the f am I? So maybe be a little bit more gentle on the single people in your life. <laughs> Women. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>